Today we're going to talk about Greece and Greece analysis. Let's begin by describing what greases are. Uh, typically they are a semi-solid lubricant consisting of an oil mixed with a thickener agent. The oil is what provides the lubrication while the thickener agent is what's keeping the grease in place. You would typically use a grease when you want the lubricant to stay in place. You want to seal out contaminants or the machine use is infrequent. Grease is used in a number of applications from bearings, couplings, gears, chains, and joints. It's also uh, important to know that greases are used in pretty well every industry and a lot of these applications tend to be overlooked from a condition monitoring perspective. A successful greasing program has three elements to it. It starts by using the right grease for the application, making sure that grease has been added in the right place at the right time and in the right quantity, and lastly, monitoring the condition of the grease as well as the bearing or other component that it's being used in to gauge the effectiveness of your lubrication program. When you're selecting a grease, there's lots of considerations. Uh, work with your lube supplier to ensure that you're using an approved and desirable grease for the application. It'll take into consideration some of these items. When you're looking at the reapplication of grease, the greasing frequencies, uh, it's important to think about things like how much grease, at what frequency, how you're going to apply it, and how you're going to adjust for conditions, either in an industrial plant, changes in load or speed, or on a mobile or outdoor application on seasonal weather changes. This is a chart showing failure modes of bearings and it's important to know that bearings fail for a number of reasons but the majority of those failure modes are related to lubrication and so performing grease analysis does provide useful information about these failure modes. In terms of collecting samples of grease, there's two methods. The preferred method is the uh, syringe method, which is an ASTM standard. And what you're going to do here is you'll open the bearing cap or a grease nipple, and you'll insert a syringe with an extender tube in. And when you pull the plunger, the grease is going to get extracted into the extender tube, and that's what you send off to the laboratory to have tested. The second way is to collect the grease that has uh, been purged out uh, typically this is done either uh, after you've added new grease and some of the old grease has been purged out, but either way you're collecting it in a baggie with a spatula. The testing that is performed, uh, these are some of the tests and they are providing useful information about grease identification, degradation, contamination, or wear. There's several other grease tests out there, but a lot of those additional tests are used for performance testing of new greases. Uh, those would be on some product data sheets. Uh, these are the typically the, the tests that are used while in service. In terms of packages, there's a number of packages that are offered with a number of applications ranging from very basic to advanced, and uh, these are some of those applications. Aside from routine grease testing, there's also a number of grease projects that are done. The most common one being a grease compatibility study. Uh, this test is ensuring that uh, a switchover from grease A to grease B won't have any negative consequences. So thank you very much. If there's any questions about this presentation or our grease analysis services, please feel free to contact us. Thank you for your time.